time for the Wandering Valley in Mantis Care Guide. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel Mantis Addict. So in this video, Viola, my Wandering Valley in Mantis and I are going to be doing a video on the introduction to Wandering Valley in Mantis and the basic care on Wandering Valley in Mantis. First of all, let's talk about the introduction. The scientific name of the Wandering Valley in Mantis is Gongylus gongylodus and it's found in India and Sri Lanka and it's also known as the Indian Rose Mantis, the Ornate Mantis and of course the Wandering Valley in Mantis. Now this species is reasonably hard to keep because of the temperature requirements and due to the fact that it does not small quite often. So now let's get on with the care guide. So first of all let's talk about the humidity and temperature. So with humidity they prefer not much of it. They don't really like that much humidity because they are from dry and arid areas. So they get most of their humidity, well their fluids from what they eat so they you don't need to miss the tank that much but you can spray the tank every day or so if it's a full mesh enclosure and every week or so if it's a glass enclosure as it holds humidity better and when they're near molting you can actually sense that when they stop eating or are not that handleable and they try to run away from you then you know that they're about to molt then just leave them alone in the tank and spray the tank a little more so that there's more humidity just to make it on keep it on the safe side so basically that's the that's with humidity just spray it once a day for a full meshed enclosure and once a week or so for a glass enclosure that holds more humidity so then now for the temperature these guys like it real hot so then you might want to use a heat lamp since these guys prefer it at around 95 to 100 degrees fahrenheit and make sure to turn off the heat lamp in the night so of course uh, this species is actually reasonably easy if you have kept reptiles before because even with reptiles you need to keep heat lamps and all so you gotta get used to the heat lamp method just because this species will require that personally for me since i live in sri lanka uh, the weather is quite warm and this is a native species so because of that i just keep it kind of near window not with direct sunlight but just where quite a lot of sunlight comes so it's quite warm in the enclosure during the daytime and if it's a rainy or gloomy day i just quickly put on the heat lamp so next up let's talk about the enclosure setup so of course you can use a mesh setup or a glass setup but keep in mind that these mantids are empucids and violin mantids and the other mantis in the family which is the empusa mantis or the cornhead mantis is also these both these species actually can't climb smooth surfaces so you'll need a good mesh enclosure so they can climb all around but in a glass enclosure you can just add some twigs and branches so they can climb or maybe paste a mesh to the side or paste something or like a 3d background that they can climb on and of course that will be good enough for the enclosure and the general rule for mantids is three times the length and height of the mantis for molting and more if you prefer as for decorations you can use twigs and branches just like in nature but make sure that they are not really in the way of the mantis so because sometimes it could interrupt it in a mold lead into a mismold so make sure that the mantis has enough space to mold properly and of course these guys can be kept communally but keep in mind that they are not 100% communal all mantis species are not 100% communal so some species like hyragula are really prone to just killing each other when they see each other so then those species are just 100% non-communal but species like the violin mantis they eat small flying insects such as flies and moths in the wild so they won't really try and prey on other mantids so but then if they get hungry they would try to eat other mantids so make sure to keep them well fed and in a good setup a big setup with some decorations here and there because once again all mantis species are not communal none of them are 100 percent communal some just have a higher chance of killing each other some have a lower chance of killing each other but still if they get hungry they can so of course if you're going to keep them communally make sure that there is a big setup 
and a bunch of places just for them to hang around like twigs and branches so with feeding these guys eat flying prey in the wild so it's best to feed something like frozen flies in captivity just take the frozen fly in a tweezer and just move it around and they will eat it and that should be good enough for them you can feed them every other day or so since even though they look big their abdomen is not the biggest it's just that the prothorax really makes it seem quite big because of the tall thorax but then the abdomen is not that big so basically that is all you should know in caring for the wandering valley mantis and of course i hope you guys learned a thing or two about caring for wandering valley mantis so i will be wrapping up this video now and good luck with mantis keeping so make sure to hit the like and subscribe button see you guys later bye